Hello everyone and welcome back to GameSpot's coverage of Summer Game Fest Key 3 2020. I'm Lucy James. Yes, I know I'm sounding a little bit more sultry than usual. Uh, but joining me is Phil Hornshaw. You've been to play Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Right. And I, despite, I used to live with Dave Jewett on our team. Um, he's a big Warhammer boy. I've never... The only Warhammer I've ever really interacted with was when they did the Lord of the Rings stuff back right. when the movies first came out. My knowledge of Warhammer, not the strongest. However, Dark Tide, like Vermintide before it, seems to be a little easier to get into. Yeah, so I'm also not much of a Warhammer person. Um, and actually, I had missed Vermintide as mm. well. But I am a big fan of games like Left 4 Dead mm -hmm. and of that sort of uh, vibe. So, yeah, my angle of this was like, can I be the guy who just jumps in and like, can I learn mm -hmm. enough about Warhammer to have a good time? And you, yes, the answer is yeah. It's uh, it's mostly about smashing people with a hammer good. in the face. Good. And when you're not smashing them with a hammer, you have a gun now, which oh. you can shoot them with. So that's Bolt like- Bolt gun or regular? It's a regular, it's a more, yeah, I guess Warhammer guns. I, <laughs> Warhammer 40K guns is a specific thing. Yep. Um, and fans will know. Yeah. Um, I had it explained to me. I don't remember exactly. Well, <laughs> you have notes. Right, um, right. Talking about just the lore, I imagine there is a lot there to love for the hardcore. Yes. Um, it's been written by Dan Abnett, who is, um, so I've been told, a very big figure in the Warhammer kind of lore and writing scene. Um, but for you, when you picked up the game for the first time, what were your immediate impressions? How did it hook you in? Yeah, so... Um, I didn't play a ton. We played like one mission, about 30 mm -hmm. minutes, mm -hmm. right? It's, and it's pretty much like a Left 4 Dead level in that you're like running from one to, end mm -hmm. to the other, doing objectives along the way, fighting guys. Um, the fun part for me, having no real understanding of the world, <laughs> was uh, it's all banter. Sneaking is no job for Ogryn. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll drop you bang on a scab fortress next time. Right, so you've yeah. got four players on a team. Um, in this game, as, as opposed to Vermintide, you're picking a class and like okay. customizing a character, whereas before you would have uh, picked a character mm -hmm. who is specific. And so because of that, you are filling in like interesting elements of their character, like backstory, what planet they're from, how they, everybody was a prisoner before, mm -hmm. and that's, they're being like thrown into this meek render because of they were in jail. It's much more about, I think, picking the kind of personality Ooh. And which is, and there are a couple options per class. And so because you're you're defining your personality, the way you interact with the other characters is kind of defined that way. And yeah. it creates a lot of um, different remixes mm -hmm. of the way those characters will interact. And because they're, you're picking a class and not a specific character, you can have four of like the Ogryn, the huge guy yeah. uh, on a team, and they can all have you know, potentially different personalities or a couple of different mm -hmm. personalities and how they bounce off each other changes depending on who's in the team, what their personalities are, kind of that team makeup. So yeah, like you're getting the story, I think a lot of it through the osmosis mm -hmm. of ha just hanging out <laughs> and having different combinations of, of prisoners going in yeah. and hopefully not getting run over. So. <laughs> no, I really, I really like that. You know, I played a bunch of Back for Blood and obviously Left for Dead and it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna pick mom again mm -hmm. and I'll get all of her voice lines and everything um, but you know there has been this kind of resurgence obviously with Back for Blood last right. year um, so and you mentioned that you really enjoy that kind of genre what is Dark Tide doing differently or even you know maybe improving upon previous games that have come right well so it's um, similar to Vermintide they're really leaning into melee combat that's mm -hmm. kind of you know what these games are known for it's really good here too you've got like this I had I was playing uh, the Zealot class which is kind of a you, you've got like a blink move that lets you get in close and then you can charge up your hammer with electricity and just start wailing on people. So that all feels really, really good. Yeah. Um, the addition is uh, for the series is the ranged combat. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you've got like a lot of different enemy encounters that you might not feel like you would have in other, you know, like zombie based forms of this game. There's a lot of melee combat, but there's also a lot of like controlling the battlefield mm -hmm. and figuring out where the range threats are and like, tuning things so that you know that you're getting a unified front so you're not getting uh, hit from the back and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it has like a sort of different feel uh, because of that, but you also, it's riffing on all of those same ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got like your elite characters who come in and shoot like a net gun at you and suddenly you're tied up on the ground. So yeah, it's it's riffing on it, but it's uh, it'll feel familiar, I think, yeah. for people who are into that sort of thing. So 
So how does that last in terms of like progression? Yeah, so I didn't see a ton of it, yeah. but I did I did hear about it. Um, and it's because it's so customizable, you're like building a character and you're gonna choose uh, as you level up, I think you get three different like traits you can unlock yeah. as you go up tiers. And so you can kind of tune how your character um, exists inside their certain yeah. class, right? And so uh, the other classes that we didn't play, like one of them, um, it has like access to magic, mm -hmm. but in Warhammer, if you use to magic magic too much, you blow up because it's kind of dark, <laughs> right? So yeah, like how the uh, how the magic works and and you know what you can do with it mm. and like how often I guess you would blow yourself up um, can be tuned through your customization. And then you have access to a number of different character slots, right? Like you can make a bunch of different characters mm -hmm. with different personalities and with different tunes up the tree. So yeah, it, like. It's, it progresses in that way so that you can kind of uh, customize your play style as you're going. Yeah, I really like mm -hmm. that. And so you were playing with three others? Mm -hmm. And everyone, is it, does it feel like you have, obviously you have the classes that you can tune, but does it feel like everyone has a specific role? Oh yes, it, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you, like I mentioned the Ogren guy who is like twice as big as everybody else and he's mm -hmm. like very clearly a tank and he has a huge knife and it like in his hand it looks like a butcher knife yeah. but to everyone else it's like the size of another guy <laughs> and, you know and so like obviously he's kind of tanking damage yeah. and uh my role uh as the zealot was you're sort of getting in fast you're trying to uh wreck guys with your melee um abilities and then maybe bounce out before it gets too Just, yeah yeah kind of like your standard dps yeah. hunter kind of yeah. feel um there you've got your magic users with a little more range uh, and you've got a straight up um, Warhammer like Marine, right? Yeah. Who's got like the laser gun and picking off headshots yeah. and stuff, handling the range threats so that we're not getting uh, sniped out basically, yeah. which was a whole problem. So, <laughs> Well, how did, you, how did you find the balance of it? Um, was it pretty Yeah, it felt good. Fed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, like I said, I didn't play it for too long, yeah. so it was hard to get too much of a feel of it. But yeah, like the game has that sort of same uh, director, AI director thing, kind of like oh, yeah. creating the the encounters as you go. Mm -hmm. And so like the, I watched a bit before I got there a little early and got to see how another team was handling it. And like their encounters had a lot more of these guys who were like hitting him with the net guns. Mm -hmm. And so they were getting like locked up a lot more and they couldn't, they weren't doing a good job of like mm -hmm. catching those because those guys like try to sneak up on you. Mm -hmm. When we ran it, uh, I was looking for those guys <laughs> and like we, I caught a few of them. Yeah. They weren't really all that effective. So they stopped popping up. It was almost, really you know, like if it, it felt yeah. a little different when we went through, we had a few more big guys come like straight at us because we were doing a good job of like knocking those guys out. So, Smart. yeah. Um, and yeah, you said the the level ran for about half an hour? Yeah, right? about that. And you know, a lot of it was like, get to a place, open a door, the sort of left for dead things that you have to do. Mm -hmm. When we got to the end, we had to like fuel up a, uh, a transport to get the heck out of there. And mm -hmm. so we were defending a whole like loading dock for a long time, carrying these big power cells over to the- um, Oh, slowly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you like toss it and like fight back. Yeah. And so it was a lot of working together to try and defend each other for that. And yeah, it's, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it seems, but it seems like it has that Warhammer feel. And also it sounds like the progress through missions is gonna have a lot of interesting variation. Yeah. Does it sound, does it uh, make you want to get more into Warhammer so you can appreciate the larger story? Yeah, you know, like this is, I, I keep having friends yeah. kind of like <laughs> ping me and I'm a lore guy anyway. So like if you, if you start talking about your story, I kind of like can't help myself. Um, the way they described it is that like you can come in, you don't have to know anything. You can just pick it up and smash people with a hammer. But there are plenty of, there's a story going on in the game, even though you know, it's mostly about shooting guys and smashing guys, but there's stuff there. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of little lore hooks that might pull you into the uh, the mm -hmm. larger world. Like it's very, very aware, obviously, of yeah. like the Warhammer 40K universe. And so it sounds like if you're interested, you can find that stuff mm -hmm. if you go looking for it and it might pull you into the rest of the world. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like it could be a cool on-ramp to yeah. get into Warhammer. Because Warhammer to me feels at, at, like at this point, this is the same opinion I have about wrestling and Final Fantasy XIV, where it is so big and it is so storied and it has so much history, it's difficult to find that right. thing that will just let you get in. Yeah. Um, so I'm very intrigued by that. Yeah, this seems like chill enough that you don't have to like know everything or really dedicate that time. You can kind of go at your own pace and catch into the story. Mm -hmm. And then as you like get more and more interested, feels like it feels like it might actually be kind of dangerous if <laughs> like kind of grab you and pull you into that world. So we'll see how it goes. Chill but gory as hell. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, Phil, thank you so much. Of course. Uh, for more on Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, make sure to stay tuned to GameSpot, as well as all our 
as well as all of our other coverage from Summer Game Fest. There was a noise outside, I was distracted. <laughs> uh, make sure to subscribe to youtube.com slash gamespot and we'll see you next time. Have a grenade, heretics!